from your perspective at the helm of the national stock exchange how do you assess the current state of global economic recovery particularly fo focusing on india and australia maybe if you look at now uh, especially post covid um, there was a, a kind of a small war which is still going on in ukraine and russia and now you have something with uh, uh, israel uh, and palestine and so in some ways uh, the whatever happened post global financial crisis and then post covid there was a huge amount of uh, uh, quantitative easing that happened and uh, somewhere on the line uh, the inflation had to increase uh, which started going up uh, across the world uh, we saw some government changes in uk and in rapid succession and so on and so forth so effectively the inflation was increasing uh, the especially uh, the essential commodities like oil natural gas the prices were uh, going up because of what happened with russia uh, and that's where i think the world was feeling the heat over the last two years and now uh, slowly uh, things seem to be slightly becoming uh, life as usual and uh, uh, the us started increasing the interest rates uh, along with europe uh, first time in probably 20 25 years um, and that's what created basically a situation where uh, the cost of borrowing started going up across the world and uh, that would ensure that the emerging economies wouldn't be able to borrow funds so many of them started defaulting you saw um, pakistan uh, defaulting bangladesh is currently going through some uh, severe issues uh, sri lanka had uh, problems and several countries including currently argentina uh, is going through the same issues so for me uh, if you look at the global uh, economic situation currently uh, the interest rates have gone up almost uh, uh, eight uh, eight times in last two years uh, from 25 basis points to almost uh, four four and a half basis points which is a very very large uh, increase uh, and that also a mix I mean, separates the the boys from the men uh, that's how i would put it and uh, somewhere uh, australia uh, and india became part of quad uh, during covid post covid uh, and a quad has become increasingly more important with japan india australia and us and other countries in asia pacific also in some ways uh, contributing to that so i see uh, two uh, sort of distinct blocks developing it may not be as severe as what used to be there in the uh, covid period i mean the cold war period but uh, still you will see the world kind of uh, moving into two different blocks unless uh, both sides uh, kind of come to a conclusion uh, on how to cooperate rather than uh, sort of compete on ideologies and other things and that's where um, of course uh, that's where australia and india uh, in a way now are uh, joined at the hip because of their um, uh, security reasons uh, and geopolitical reasons and many times um, in my talks i say that geopolitics eats economics for breakfast uh, and that's where uh, basically for me uh, today uh, india australia are coming closer at the same time expectations uh, which australians had uh, when i came Uh, a few probably uh, seven eight years back uh, during G20 in Australia. Uh, that time people were saying that now India will uh, take on from where China left, and I used to tell them that what China can do, India cannot do because uh, China is one country of 1.4 billion, one company of 1.4 billion people. India is a one country of 1.4 billion people. So one company can do a lot of things, one country cannot do actually a democracy, uh, and that's where. Uh, basically uh, at the same time uh, what you think may not happen but many more interesting things will happen so that's where uh, today australia and india are slowly uh, joining uh, hands together on many many occasions many areas including agriculture and energy on uh, biotech on uh, sort of uh, uh, mining uh, some of the larger employers now in australia also are indians Uh, and similarly in uh, high tech uh, in information technology and so on and so forth on india's own side been traditionally um, australia has been exporter of uh, raw materials to uh, mainly china over last 30 40 years and increasingly so which has now 
coming down because China's uh, need for uh, new material uh, is coming down because their infrastructure is going down and overall the world had slowed down in uh, terms of the, the demand for consumer goods. Uh, but uh, on the high tech side, there is huge uh, uh, demand uh, that is taking place. There is a services uh, situation where due to using uh, telecom lines, people are uh, in, sitting in India are able to provide services to the rest of the world in a, a much more cost effective and much more uh, efficient way. And that's where I think overall uh, India is geopolitically important, uh, but also uh, in terms of bilateral between Australia and India, there are many areas of cooperation uh, where India can learn from Australia and India needs uh, for its own uh, growth, uh, a lot of uh, minerals and uh, chemicals, which uh, clearly uh, Australia can provide. Now, uh, India is also decisively uh, moved with uh, uh, US in a, a geopolitical sense and that's why uh, this block is being formed, the core part. And that's where I think overall uh, both countries will come together more often. I wish there were better flights uh, which are not hopping flights and so on and so forth. And uh, naturally cricket brings both the countries together like uh, nothing else. Uh, and uh, being an avid cricket fan, I think uh, it's important that we continue to engage uh, both uh, teams are world class and both uh, countries have uh, some great cricketing culture. So overall, uh, in a way, Australia and India are uh, going to uh, come closer and closer on the stock market side or the investment side. Australia has not uh, had much investments into India. India is a capital uh, hungry country. Uh, there are uh, infrastructure and other things being built all the time and uh, Australia has a huge uh, sort of savings which is lined with very little returns which can easily be uh, invested into Indian productive capital and that way uh, they can uh, gain uh, a much more uh, deeper uh, relationship with India and also get uh, the returns on their investment that's what the Canadian pension fund is doing or Brookfields from Canada uh, and many other Canadian agencies are doing, uh, which is amazing in terms of literally they are putting tens or 20 billion dollars each every year into Indian infrastructure and that is what even Japan is doing uh, in terms of bullet train and now the new uh, Mumbai uh, sea link between uh, the mainland and the island to Panvel and to the new airport uh, that is basically uh, the Japanese uh, funded project. So for me, uh, Australia is in the right uh, place uh, with all the love and affection that Indians have uh, with Australia uh, and probably uh, many more good things are yet to come.